Hello everyone, we are down in our mollusk collection today um, with researcher Suzanne Williams and we've been finding out all about a particular type of mollusk, a nudibranch called a sea bunny. Now if you haven't seen that video, check that out, the link is on the screen and down in the description. But we've got some, some other really uh, special specimens we're going to look at today as well. But let's start with those, those sea, sea bunnies, Suzanne. What are we talking about here? Nudibranchs. Nudibranchs, they're marine sea slugs and they're very pretty, very, very colourful sea slugs. They're not like garden slugs at all. They are absolutely beautiful and uh, they're, they're, they're very varied as well. Sea bunnies is, is, is one nickname for one type of nudibranch, but there are more, aren't there? Yes, yes. We have uh, in the UK, we have sea lemons, which That's are so cute. very cute. And we have sea dragons, which uh, live in the open ocean. They live in the very top surface of the open ocean and they're predators. They will eat the stinging cells from the man of war jellyfish. We also have Pikachu nudibranchs and Shaun the Sheep nudibranchs. <laughs> and Shaun the Sheep is brilliant. I, I advise you to check out Shaun the Sheep nudibranch. Google it, very, very cool. <laughs> it is, it's very nice. <laughs> so how many different species are there? There's about 3,000 different species. Wow. It's pretty incredible. Um, and where do we find them? I mean, we've got some in the UK, in the open ocean. Are they pretty much everywhere? They are. They're in every ocean. They're from shallow to deep. They live on bryozoans, soft corals, algae and sponges. Wow, that is incredible. And they are, as you've mentioned, very, very beautiful. Some of the most colourful animals, I think, in the ocean, aren't they? So, so why so colourful? Well, it's a good question. The, the colour is uh, really important for many animals' survival and with nudibranchs, they're one of our best examples of warning coloration. So many nudibranchs take up toxins from the food they eat, from sponges and soft corals, and they sequester those toxins inside their flesh and then they make themselves very brightly coloured to warn potential predators that they are unpalatable and possibly toxic. Absolutely. Um, it's, it's, it's hard to see some of our examples today, but they are very, very beautiful, very colourful. Is it just for defence, though, or are there other, other uses for, for this colour? Well, colour in other species is useful for finding a mate. That's probably not relevant for nudibranchs because they have very poor eyes. They use their rhinophores and little tubercles on their back for um, sensing chemicals in the water to find mates and food and predators. But uh, another thing that colour is often used for, colour and pattern, is camouflage. And some nudibranchs do use colour for camouflage. Um, we've got a particularly interesting uh, example uh, here, haven't we? Can you tell us a little bit about these two, these uh, two, two specimens are, you've got? Yeah, these are really nice. This is a sea cucumber. This is not a not nudibranch. nudibranch. This is uh, a nudibranch. This is uh, Phyllidia varicosa. This is a very brightly coloured nudibranch in life, not in our museum collection. Many colours fade in museum collections, so most of our collection is brown. But in life, they're very colourful. This sea cucumber, when it's a juvenile and very small and the same size as the, the nudibranch, it has the same colours and pattern, so it mimics these uh, nudibranchs. These nudibranchs sequester poisons from the sponges that they eat, so they're toxic and unpalatable to predators. And the sea cucumber just hitchhikes on this benefit by producing the same sort of colour and pattern. Of course, once it gets bigger, it's no longer able to pretend to be a nudibranch and it changes colour and actually sequesters its own toxins as well. It's incredible. We're taking advantage of a... Yeah. <laughs> yeah cheating. Another, <laughs> cheating, definitely. <laughs> of another poisonous uh, mollusk. It's, it's brilliant. Are there any um, colours that are particularly rare in, in um, sea creatures? Yes, it's really interesting. Um, not all colours are equal. You find that some colours, and particularly blue and green, are, are rare colours. So we have some green shells here for you to look at. And you would think that green is a fabulous colour for camouflage. Mm -hmm. Many snails, particularly, live in plants, and this would be a great colour for hiding but you don't find very many green shells. And we think this is partly because green pigments may be hard to make and hard to incorporate into shells. Wow. Are there any green nudibranchs? There are, <laughs> it's really cool. There are a group of uh, nudibranchs known as sacoglossins, and they actually eat algae and they will take up the chloroplasts from the algae 
that are still actively photosynthesizing and they'll incorporate them into their mantle tissues and then they use them to photosynthesize. So they will get energy from these chloroplasts that are photosynthesizing just as a plant does. And if they're in an area uh, at a time when there's not very much food or it's a bit dark and it's not working for photosynthesis, they can then just eat the chloroplasts. <laughs> so they benefit both ways. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. Oh, and also from camouflage because the animal is green, so it's hide, hiding in the plants. They are amazing animals. I had no idea that they were they were so complex and, and interesting. This is it's been absolutely fascinating. Thank you so much, Shazan. Um, Thank you. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed that video, let us know in the comments, and remember like and subscribe to keep up with our latest videos.